Hey everyone, welcome to the KE Report, a company update from Banyan Gold. I am chatting with Tara Christie, President and CEO, as well as Duncan McKay, Vice President of Exploration. Banyan Gold is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol BYN and on the OTCQB under the symbol BYAGF. We're not following up on a news release here. What we're going to do is talk about the company building out this new geological model. It's going to be a bit more of a technical discussion. That's why we have Duncan on the line with us as well. I guess first we should start off, Tara, where we hear a lot of exploration companies, even more so the advanced exploration companies, talking about the geological model that they are building out. Before we get into the nuances of the model that you have built out at Banyan, we should probably get an overview of what's important about a geological model. Why do you and your team build out these models and what do these models help you do in terms of future work? Well, the model is the core of our resource, actually, that you base your 43101 on. So how your gold is hosted is a really important part of how you show the influence of a drill hole over an area in space and you develop you know the geostatistics around that to put together your resource model of course all of our new resource model was developed for our new resource that we just put out and quite frankly it's getting a lot of attention because our resource is a lot more lithologically constrained we had a really high success rate converting from our inferred ounces to indicated and that's garnering a bit of attention along with, you know, the drill results that we've had recently showing, you know, that high grade following up on on the drilling from last year where we got the, the 16 meters of nine grams and, you know, this year, 40 meters of 3.95. So people have been asking, you know, what's changed with Banyan, Tara? What is this new model, this high grade that we're hearing about? And so I wanted to touch base with you to kind of talk about some of that because our last two news releases with the new resource model, you know, 2 million ounces of indicated, very high conversion rate, a significant core, you know, that 4.55 million ounces of a gram within it, and then these high grade results. So what's to come and how are we targeting? And I wanted to bring Duncan on because he joined us in February, came from from Yamana as well as working for, for other junior mining companies. And it's really been a game changer for us, both this new model and where we're finding this high grade. So that's why I wanted to, you know, talk to you, Corey, because I think it's exciting and it's going to be a really change the perception of Banyan as we go into the fall. Okay, Duncan, let's get you in here, because since you came in in February, look, the company already had a really large resource. There are a lot of drill holes already on this ORMAC project. But since you've come in, now you're, what, six months into the job. What changes, what developments have you seen in this geological model, I guess, considering just the drilling that's happened this year and incorporating what happened last year? Yeah, so when I started in February, they'd already implemented the new geologically underpinned model. They'd spent, recognized in the summer of last year, this lithologic control on vein and then subsequently gold emplacement in the power line deposit. And then using that for the new MRE, they were able to better constrain the understanding of the mineralization. And so then with the me coming in in February and looking at exploration planning for the coming season, we really wanted to focus on some of these high grade areas. So like Tara mentioned, at the end of last year, they had that really nice drill hole in at Airstrip in 590, where they intersected high-grade scar and mineralization in contact with the Felsic Dyke. And so we wanted to follow up on targets like that, that we can use our 3D geologic model to really target these specific areas of the deposit that carry a lot of this gold. Now, when it comes to this high grade, this really has been the focus of the company. And we've seen the drill bit deliver higher grade what can you tell us about the size of this high grade or at least what the geological model is telling you about the overall potential and overall size on the project yeah so looking at airstrip specifically this year we had our drill hole 650 one of our earlier drill holes it was actually just looking at continuity of the that high grade zone and it ended up being the best drill hole we've drilled at airstrip which is always a you know pleasant surprise and that's where we got that 38 you know 38 meters at 3.95 grams per ton with a couple double digit intervals in there one of them was i think 41 grams per ton so that we're drilling into this core of this high grade mineralization the broader mineralization is hosted in our calcareous metasedimentary unit we have two of them at airstrip the lower one is higher grade 
and where it contacts the felsic dike that cuts through everything there, that's where we get this really strong mineralization concentrated at the contact. And so the actual core that we're sort of trying to trace out currently have it at about, I believe it's about 100 meters down dip and about 300 meters along strike and a little bit up dip as well on, in the foot wall of the felsic dike where there's this really high grade mineralization that we've been able to trace out. And it's still open along strike and at depth. And with this realization of these higher grade potential areas, we're taking advantage of when we're doing our infill for indicated conversion to extend in a couple of these areas as well to try to you know, test a little bit deeper than had been previously drilled by previous operators or early in the exploration here. One other thing we hear a lot about from companies that have resources is the conversion of what is thought to be waste rock into some sort of mineable material, something that could be economic. How does the geological model play into that or does it have any impact on that? Yeah, no, it's huge. Again, with that, when starting with last summer and then through the fall or through the winter, one of the things that I did was take the geologic model that they had, which was you know, really robust, you know, lithogeochemical model to define the stratigraphy that hosts our mineralization. And then within that, look for other geologic indicators I can use to refine those mineralized domains even tighter. Uh, so then we can look for the extensions of these specific domains. And so then we can go, in the case of power line, we have a lot of this high grade material as well. You know, we get a lot of our intervals are into high single digit, double digit grams per ton when we're into our higher densities of sheeted veins. And so when we find these these bits of the lithology that are more suited to hosting the sheeted veins, we're able to trace these out and then look at areas in the MRE where maybe the you know, there may be an, a couple of drill holes that weren't drilled deep enough previously, and we have these ridges in the pit floor. So when we're doing our indicated infill, we can extend down to try to flatten out that pit floor, convert some of that, and bring it into the the actual resource. And then around the pit edges and within other parts of the pit as well, the conceptual pit, we're able to convert waste blocks on the edge where we know that this this mineralized domain cuts off just due to lack of drilling. And then outside of that, it's all waste blocks. So then we can throw in a couple up dip holes or a long strike or down dip holes and basically convert all of that, what would normally be going to the waste stockpile into ore. Tara, I'm curious, from a corporate perspective, clearly this model is used by your team for targeting, for planning out drill programs. But when you're out marketing the company, telling the story, what sort of investors or what sort of companies really care and really dive into these models? Oh, actually, quite a few. You know, some of your fairly sophisticated institutional funds and, and some of the corporates have actually been waiting for us to change our geological model and to to tighten up our confidence in the resource with some indicated. And there are specifically some funds which will only invest once they see you have indicated. So I think it's been it has been really interesting. We've had people come in our door or set up calls with us specifically because of this change. And, you know, I think you can see that our share price is starting to move because people are starting to pay attention. We're starting to get a lot of inbound interest. Of course, gold price is helping as well. Now, when you say change, what do you mean by change? Is that the new resource that came out in July, the model that was developed around there? Is there something bigger picture that changed with this model? No, this is this model that came out with the new min mineral resource in July was a, was a big change from our previous resource model, which was more just connecting different layers. This is actually very lithologically constrained and, and defensible. And that's partly why it is it's so important to us. And I think that that combined with people seeing that, you know, yeah, yeah the gold is there, it's hosted within, it, it makes sense geologically, and they can see these extensions of these higher grade zones, and they can see it's continuous at an indicated level. Uh, that's all brings in more confidence for some of those investors. And, and quite frankly, there some of the institutions want you to bring sections and they want to look for that continuity and they want to see how your geological model hangs together. So, so it's actually really important. So Duncan, from, I guess, this more exploration front, seems like we've been talking a whole lot about this model around the resource, but can you use anything within this model for further targeting, let's say, across the property outside of the immediate resource area? Yeah, so when you have a better understanding of 
the sort of broader metallogeny of your of your region and your your property it it gives you insight into what to look for when we're doing step outs or looking at whole new areas of our property just being able to recognize when we may be getting close to mineralized zones that may not have been previously found and give you that ability to vector into them a little bit better so what does that mean for further exploration work i, I know we're going to have a more focused exploration call but let's tease the audience a little bit with what that could mean for future exploration well, yeah. So we, we, I always like to try and keep, you know, 10% of the drill budget into sort of pure exploration, looking outside of known deposits. We have a, you know, very large land package that we're exploring between Oramac and Nitra. You know, we we looking at just the main Oramac deposit that only covers about 5% of the the area that we have there. And we have very extensive cover. So we've done a lot of geophysical work. We're continuing to do soil sampling. And we're now pairing our regional data sets with our geophysics and soil geochemistry, applying machine learning techniques to help us out on prospectivity mapping and trying to generate additional targets that way. So Ta, I guess final comments from you. This geological model, clearly a lot of drilling's gone into this. And you're now more focused and you've been hitting this much higher grade par portions of the resource. Where do you go from here using this model, but also adding value to the company? Well, I think you'll see it with the results from our drill bit. You know, we've drilled over 100 holes, 24,000 meters. We've only released seven holes. So, you know, this fall, I think it'll be pretty exciting as we put out drill results and we show the effectiveness of this new model and how we've been able to both grow ounces and grade. And yep, this year we finally get to spend 10% of our budget on pure exploration. You know, we're, we were really fortunate to be in a strong financial position. So yeah, let's step out and use what we've known and show that this deposit is actually much bigger than just the current footprint at Ormac. It's a big footprint where we're at, but I'm pretty excited about what that means for the fall as we get to get out and, and really redefine Banyan and show, yeah, there's a real significant high-grade core to this deposit, which will be what you mine, and we're showing more high-grade results, and this deposit continues to grow. So I'm I'm pretty excited about it. We've got an excellent team. You know, we've really started to add on the right people for the next phase of this project. So I think that's going to put us in a, in a great position. Let me follow up one more with that then. What do you mean the right team for the next phase? What is the next phase of this project? Well, you know, we're no longer an early exploration story. We're still on the exploration upside part of the curve. You know, even that 10% exploration, I think we've got real opportunity with that, as well as where we're drilling off these high grade to continue to get some of that discovery excitement. Meanwhile, you know, here we are right beside two mines. We've got a very significant deposit with roads and powers, and we've started to understand what the economics of it. We know this year's program is going to continue to, to change that. But in this gold market, there's going to be a lot of M&A upcoming. I think we're going to be a key project. We're located in a, in a jurisdiction where, you know, there's a mine for sale beside us. So all of that, I think, is culminating to be a not a perfect storm, but a, a pretty exciting catalyst for Banyan come this fall. All right. Thank you for the update here. Again, Tara Christie, President and CEO of Banyan Gold, and Duncan McKay, Vice President of Exploration. Again, a bit more of a technical discussion. If any of you listening have any follow-up questions or want any more information on this geological model, what it means for the company, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. I'll get those addressed for you, and if enough questions come in, I'll follow up with the team at Banyan to record another update to answer all these questions and upcoming. I'm also going to be following up with the team in the next week or two for more of a exploration focused discussion. So stay tuned for that. So Tara, Duncan, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, thanks for having us.